So interviews are hard. You're gonna be grilled with a lot of questions, but there's one question that always comes up at the end that a lot of people are not prepared for. And that question is, do you have any questions for me? Now, before I keep going, if you guys like this stuff, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like if you like this video in particular. So the reason this question is so difficult is actually mostly circumstantial. It comes at the end of the interview where you're worn out from trying to pay attention and answer questions and maintain you know, some level of professionalism. So when it comes, you're usually about ready for the interview to be over and it's kind of easy to just say the worst answer, which is no. This answer just makes it look like you're not interested or maybe you're not actually thinking about accepting the role at this point. So it really could hurt you if you just don't have any questions at all about the place that you're gonna be working at probably for a while. So I'm gonna start with a really easy one and that's what's the location like? So this is a nice softball one to throw out there because pretty much unless you're doing remote work, it's gonna be applicable. And anyone that's been working there for a while will have the little things that they like and the things that maybe they don't, they probably won't tell that to you, but they'll say, yeah, there's this nice little restaurant around the corner, stuff like that. So it's nice light to talk and you sort of do wanna know about it. Now, especially if you're moving to a bigger place, this really works because you may be new to the state and they could actually give you a little bit of information. Believe me, as someone who moved to a new state, to you know, work at their first job, uh, you know, I wish I had known more. It, it's, I love this state, but I didn't really know what I was walking into at all. So it's nice to have somebody in this setting to actually talk to you about it a little bit. Now, the next one is sort of similar, it's sort of softball, but it doesn't work as often. And that's ask them about the office environment. Now, what I mean by that is, is this an open office? Is this a cubicle? Is this, do you, you know, get your own office or share an office? So these are things that if you don't already know, you really should want to. Uh, the downside to this is it's possible that as part of the interview, you already kind of figured this out. And, and for me, I saw a lot of times I would kind of, you know, you walk in and you interview where you're gonna be working. So some of that is answered for you, but you can always throw it out a little bit, like sort of how does this office work, you know? So that one's okay, but let's go on to the big one. And that is, actual things about the job. And we're gonna start with this one, which is probably one of my favorite, which is how big is the team that I'm working on? Now you have to be careful with this one because it may have already been explicitly told to you and you don't wanna make it look like you weren't paying attention. But it's a really good question to ask because it's possible the answer will be, you're it. And that could be a really big red flag, right? Now, generally that doesn't happen, but if you are being hired to do something and you are, especially if you're straight out of college or something and you're all they've got, that's not exactly a good sign. But beyond that, it gets them talking about how things work, which you, know, you can do more leading questions on as well. And you need to know this because this is something that's actually gonna be important to your work. If you're working on a team of 100 people versus five, and none of those are bad things, neither of those are bad things, but it really will uh, you know, choose the dynamic of, of how you work. And that leads into another question, which is sort of how do projects work? So you can be a little bit more granular about that. A good way of going about it is saying, so do we idea the project or are there other teams that do that? Do we you know, work it front to back all the way from beginning to end? Uh, what are the stakeholders that we deal with? What are they like? What are their general wants and, and needs? And how do we work with them? And do we uh, consult or do we offload this to other, you know, certain things to other departments? Like if, say, you're doing some kind of development job, you know, do, is artwork done by some kind of other department or are we sort of expected to do that? How closely do we work with the people that we consult with? Where do they come from? Are they in-house or do they tend to be outside contractors? These are all really good questions that it's kind of good for you to know because it's gonna kind of decide what your work life looks like and it can make a big difference. Even if it, you know, you're straight out of college and it doesn't mean much to you, this is a great question to ask. So another one that I find to be really good is management questions or moving up questions. How do promotions work here? Uh, what are prospects for technical people to get into management? And this is not only good because it shows that you're interested in working there long term, but it also shows um, 
a opportunity for the interviewer to go a little bit into the organization structure and tell you how that works. The fact that you're talking about that sort of makes you look like a great fit for the role in that moment. And you may actually want to know, you might be interested in getting into management, but even if you're not, I suggest that you ask because it just looks good to do that. And just because you're not interested now doesn't mean you wouldn't be interested in the future. Now, moving on, these are ones I wouldn't call good questions. These are iffy questions. These are questions I wouldn't ask unless you want to know these things. So one of them is work-life balance. So I'm not saying this is a bad question to ask, but it can put you on a little bit of shaky territory because at first, you know, it might make it sound like you're not actually interested in working hard, especially if this question somehow comes up sort of early in this line of questioning. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad question to ask, and if you are really interested in it, it's okay to ask it. Another reason though that it's not maybe a great question is because it's not likely to be answered honestly, unfortunately, that pretty much anyone you ask is gonna say that the company has a good work-life balance. They're not gonna say, oh yeah, we're gonna work you like a dog, right? Generally, the interviewer is not gonna tell you that, even if it's the case. And that goes for more granular questions like, do you expect us to work weekends? or uh, maybe even working from home uh, accommodations, unless that's already something that's sort of part of the job. So I wouldn't ask this unless you actually really do wanna know. If you want the ability to work from home in your job, then you should ask it. It's, it's worth asking because you wanna know and they are not just interviewing you, you are interviewing them. So another iffy one to ask is, tell me about yourself. Uh, while this could be an okay question and it's certainly an easy softball to throw out there, it might come across sort of the wrong way. And there are a lot of, of ways you can do this. In my experience, this is mostly okay. But one that I thought was good initially was, how long have you been working here? Now, most of the time this is fine, but it could come uh, by as a little bit pry, like what business of, is it of yours? And I generally wouldn't recommend this question, although it's still better than just saying you don't have any questions. So beyond that, I want to implore you to ask these, not just so you have something to say, but actually you do wanna know these things. And I know for someone getting out of college, trying to get into a first job, it's gonna fall on deaf ears. I get it, I've been there. But it really is important and it's gonna you know, kind of dictate how the future of your life goes. Another thing to realize is even if you are coming straight out of college, you could end up with more than one job offer. You may not think that's possible, like I didn't think it was possible, but I did. And when you get to that point, you may really wish you would ask more questions. Okay guys, I hope this video helped you. If you have any disagreements uh, with me on this or comments or questions, feel free to post them down below. Again, if you like this stuff, please subscribe to this channel. I know that most of you are not subscribed. It will not be intrusive. I am not gonna ping you all the time. Just please subscribe and have a good night.